Ever wonder why people join cults? Are they just gullible, or is there something more? Intriguing, isn't it? Like a psychological puzzle waiting to be solved, cults and their charismatic leaders have long fascinated us, drawing us into their world of mystery and enigma. Today, we're embarking on a captivating journey to understand this psychological phenomenon. We're not just scratching the surface, oh no, we're diving deep into the minds of those who lead and those who follow. From the charismatic puppeteers who pull the strings, to the lures of belonging that draw ordinary people into extraordinary situations. We'll explore the insidious methods of brainwashing, the power of repetition, and even the role money plays in these enigmatic societies. And most importantly, we'll explore how individuals break free from the strings that bind them. So, are you ready to delve into the world of cults and their charismatic leaders? Cults, they're not just about strange rituals and mysterious symbols. Indeed, the real essence of a cult lies in its structure, driven by charismatic leadership, isolation and manipulation. Imagine a charismatic leader, someone who can charm the birds from the trees, drawing people in with their compelling vision. Now, picture that leader isolating their followers, controlling their interactions and subtly manipulating their thoughts and actions. That's the making of a cult. So cults are more than just strange groups, they are highly organized and manipulative structures. Now, who's pulling the strings in these cults? Meet the charismatic puppeteer. This individual is the maestro of manipulation, the conductor of conformity. With a charm as enchanting as a siren song, they draw their followers into a symphony of devotion. Their charisma is not just magnetic, it's hypnotic, creating an irresistible pull that draws in the unsuspecting. Their manipulation, however, extends beyond mere charm. They are master strategists, skilled at playing on people's fears, hopes and insecurities to bend them to their will. Like a puppeteer pulling strings, they control every move, every thought, every belief of their followers. The puppeteer's power lies not just in their charisma, but in their ability to make their followers feel special, chosen, part of something greater than themselves. But the reality? They are nothing more than marionettes dancing to the puppeteer's tune. These puppeteers don't just lead, they control and manipulate. Ever felt the need to belong? That's what cults prey upon. It's a universal human experience, really. We all crave connection, acceptance, community. It's hardwired into our DNA, a survival instinct from our cave-dwelling days. But cults take this fundamental need and twist it, exploit it. Imagine a round peg feeling out of place in a square hole world. Then one day it stumbles upon a round hole. It fits, it belongs, that's the allure of a cult. It offers a sense of belonging, a home for the misfits, the outcasts, the seekers. It's a place where the round pegs can finally fit in, no longer needing to squeeze into square holes. But here's the catch. This feeling of belonging doesn't come free. It demands unquestioning loyalty, total surrender, absolute obedience. The round hole morphs into a trap, a prison. In a cult, acceptance comes at a hefty price. You've heard about brainwashing, but how does it really work? Well, in the context of a cult, it's a sinister process where free thinking is gradually replaced by the cult's beliefs. A person's critical thinking skills are eroded, making them more susceptible to the cult's influence. It's like gardening, but instead of nurturing beautiful flowers, the cult leader plants seeds of obedience and blind faith. And just like that, a free-willed individual becomes a puppet. Brainwashing isn't science fiction, it's a terrifying reality in cults. Ever noticed how repetition can make anything seem true? In the world of cults, repetition is not just a method, but a master tool for manipulation. It's akin to a potter shaping clay, the constant rhythmic motion solidifying the form. Cult leaders use it to reinforce beliefs, repeating their doctrines until they are etched into the minds of the members. Like a catchy jingle that sticks in your head, these repeated messages shape thoughts, control actions and ultimately bind people. In a cult, repetition is a powerful tool for control. What's the one thing cults always seem to need more of? You guessed it, money. Now you might be thinking, well, doesn't everyone need more money? And you'd be right. But here's the thing, in cults, money takes on a whole new meaning. It's not just about survival or luxury, it's about control. See, cult leaders often use money as a tool of manipulation. 
Members are often required to give a significant portion of their income to the group. This financial commitment serves two purposes. First, it helps to fund the cult's activities. Second, and perhaps more importantly, it makes members financially dependent on the group. And it's not just about cash. It's about assets, properties, businesses. In some cases, members are even required to sign over their entire estates. Imagine that, giving up everything you've worked for only to find yourself completely dependent on the group. In a cult, your money isn't your own. So how does one break free from a cult? It's a formidable task indeed. The process involves breaking down mental barriers, questioning deeply ingrained beliefs and seeking help from the outside world. It's like a puppet cutting its own strings, a daunting yet liberating act. The road can be rocky, strewn with doubts and fears. But remember, each step forward, however small, is a victory. It takes courage, resilience and a lot of self-love. Breaking free isn't easy, but it's the first step towards reclaiming your life. Ever heard of a cult of personality? Let's talk about that. Imagine a world where a leader isn't just respected or admired, they're worshipped, seen as infallible. Every word they utter becomes gospel, every action a divine directive. This is the essence of a cult of personality, where leaders tap into the human desire for a deity, exploiting it to cement their power. In a cult of personality, the leader isn't just a leader, they're a god. Cults and pyramid schemes, more similar than you think. Both are built on a hierarchical structure, with the leader or founder at the peak. Just like a cult leader, the originator of a pyramid scheme recruits followers who then recruit more followers, creating a pyramid of people all feeding money or power upwards. The promise of exponential growth lures people in, but the reality is only those at the very top truly prosper. In both cults and pyramid schemes, those at the top benefit the most. Love bombing, it's not as pleasant as it sounds. Imagine a friend who showers you with compliments, attention and affection like a relentless rain of roses. But these roses have thorns, hidden intentions. This is love bombing, a manipulation tactic often used in cults. It's an emotional onslaught designed to disarm your defenses, making you susceptible to further manipulation. It's a counterfeit currency, an illusion of genuine affection. Remember, in the convoluted world of a cult, even love is a weapon. What's a cult without a few secrets? Now, let's dive deep into the rabbit hole of secrecy. In cults, information isn't just power. It's a meticulous web of control. Leaders shroud their doctrines in layers of mystery, creating a tantalizing allure for the uninitiated. But here's the twist. These secrets aren't really about sacred truths or divine revelations. They're tools, masterfully wielded to manipulate members, to isolate them from the outside world. Remember, in a cult, knowledge isn't power. It's a threat. Enjoying this deep dive into cults? It's a fascinating world out there, isn't it? If you want to continue exploring with us, make sure to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit those buttons and stay tuned for more. So, what happens after you leave a cult? Well, it's not as simple as walking out the door and getting on with your life. The aftermath of leaving a cult is often a complex and challenging journey. The psychological scars run deep and the road to recovery is long and winding. Imagine spending years, even decades, under the influence of a charismatic puppeteer. Your beliefs, your actions, your very identity, all manipulated and controlled. Now you're on your own trying to piece together your shattered self. The social challenges can be just as daunting. You may be ostracized by those still under the puppeteer's control, labeled a traitor, an outcast. Reintegrating into mainstream society can feel like learning a foreign language. But remember, it's a journey. Each step, no matter how small, is a victory. Each day, no matter how tough, is a testament to your resilience. Leaving a cult is just the beginning of a long road to recovery. So, what have we learned about cults and their leaders? We've peeled back the layers of the charismatic puppeteer, explored the lure of belonging, and delved into the manipulative tactics of brainwashing and repetition. We've scrutinized the financial exploitation, the pyramid schemes, and the bombardment of love. We've peeked into the secretive world of cults and discussed the aftermath for those who break free. 
These insights help us comprehend the complex psychology behind cults and their leaders. Remember, understanding is the first step to prevention. That's all for today's exploration of cults and their puppeteers. We hope you found the journey as intriguing as we did. Don't forget to share your thoughts, we're interested to hear. Stay curious, stay vigilant, and as always, stay tuned for more. Savoured this video, fancy another? Click the on-screen video for an even deeper dive into fresh territory. Your support is like a warm cuppa on a brisk day. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe, ring that bell for the latest content. Cheers for watching.